Agriculture represents about 13% of the carbon emissions, carbon dioxide emissions into the atmosphere. So the first thing I would say is that we need to understand that agriculture plays a significant role in our climate change policies. Now what we need to do in response to that is first to avoid further car carbon losses to the atmosphere and that comes simply down to productivity. We need to feed more people, we need to produce fiber, we need to produce fuel. That's going to require more land unless we can increase the productivity on the land that we are currently growing things on. If we don't do that, we're going to chop down more forests, that will mean more carbon losses, that will mean a bigger impact on climate change. So there's the first thing. The, the second thing is to reduce the current amounts that are being put into the atmosphere through agriculture. Now there's a very simple, well established way of doing that and that is to reduce the ploughing that we currently do. We call it conservation agriculture. It's reducing ploughing or not ploughing at all. So you plant the seeds directly into the ground. What difference does that make? Basically it's putting more carbon into the soil and resulting in less carbon dioxide being released from the soil. When you plough, you expose the organic material, that then decomposes and lets out carbon dioxide, re releases carbon dioxide. If you don't plough, that process doesn't happen. Basically, the net result of no-till is approximately one tonne per hectare of extra carbon into that soil. Currently, there is 100 million hectares of land under conservation tillage. So that's approximately twice the size of France. So simply from the currently that amount of no-till results in about 100 million tons less, uh, more carbon in the soil, less carbon dioxide being released from the soil, about four times less carbon dioxide being released from the soil. So that's the second thing you can do. The third thing is actually mitigation to adapt to the change in, in climate so that farmers can still grow crops under the conditions that they will face in the future. And that comes down to some of the new technologies that we have. And those new technologies mainly come from new plant varieties that are produced through biotechnology. So you can produce, and we will have available soon, crops that are drought resistant. They can be grown with less water or they use water less, uh, more efficiently. There are plants that are saline resistant, i.e. they're tolerant to salt. And one of the effects of climate change is that we will see more salty areas. So plants that can do that. And the third thing is plants that use uh, nutrients much more efficiently, so we use less nitrogen itself having an effect on climate change. Even if you listen generally to all the, con uh, the conversations, the reports about climate change, there is very little mention of agriculture. There is a relationship in some of the discussions and that's when we talk about clearing of forests and I've already said that increasing productivity will reduce that, but one hasn't related the uh, lowering of forest clearance to the improvement in agricultural productivity. So we've got to look at that link. Also, as we, we know, no-till conservation agriculture is a way of reducing carbon releases into the atmosphere. I don't think we've taken that on board enough and we're not promoting it above enough. And, and finally, the new technologies. We need to adopt and adapt those new technologies to the different regions of the world. If we are not 
re registering those products in the countries where they can be used, we won't be able to benefit from those technologies. I don't think we've taken all of that on board enough and we need to much more. Farmers impact on the environment, their stewardship of the countryside is very important. It's essential to our sustainable future, uh, both in terms of feeding uh, the world population, to maintaining the environment, to making sure that we have minimum and in indeed reduced impact on climate change. So we must work with farmers by providing them with the appropriate technologies and with the appropriate knowledge and ideas that allows them to make the correct decisions uh, to achieve that stewardship of the land. We promote very widely uh, integrated crop management, which basically is all about growing crops properly from choosing the right seed to preparing the land properly to irrigating properly, to managing pests so you maintain your yields once you have got them. In other words, that you can achieve the full potential yield of any crop. Uh, we promote that across the world, in Africa, in Asia, in Latin America, in Europe and in North America. By promoting those, we are making sure that we maximize the yields from our agriculture, but we're also carrying out our agricultural practices that are in a way that's sustainable and has minimum environmental impact, including minimal impacts on climate. And that comes down to where it's appropriate, conservation agriculture. It comes down to when you choose the right varieties, choose ones that are adapted to the conditions that you are now facing, whether that in is drought areas, whether that is areas that uh, are saline and also we move on to proper pest control using products for pest control that are appropriate for their use only using them when they're absolutely necessary and making sure they're used safely. Uh, there obviously is a lot of potential to replace uh, a percentage uh, of current fossil fuels with biofuels. This is particularly true for the newer generation of biofuel materials that are coming through. Grasses such as switchgrass which are being bred both through conventional means and through biotechnology to increase their yields to make them more appropriate for production and then for processing and that will then lead to much more efficient production of biofuels. Added to that through biotechnology, we are producing better means of processing through enzymes, the molecules, the products that are used to break down the material, the plant material, into fuel. And that efficiency will be made much greater. The net result is a much more effective production of biofuels that we we'll see in the future and there we see a great impact will be made on the use of fossil fuels and that will lead on to the influence and impact that has on climate change and release of carbon dioxide etc. The production of plants that are drought resistant uh, is particularly important because there we see that the not only the impacts in terms of yield etc but 70 percent of the world's water is used in agriculture we need to use that water much more efficiently uh, we need to be able to grow uh, crops on land where basically we're un unable to irrigate them at present to their optimum uh, by being able to grow crops that are resistant to drought, we're going to be able to grow uh, crops under much harsher conditions in terms of climate, in terms of availability of water. I think that that in particular is the most exciting uh, innovation.